Okay, so this video is to help you build out your essay argument to a better map than what is probably already existing in your essay. So the first thing is we can't really say any kind of uh, generally applicable advice except for stuff that's really kind of broad, which I'll try to do in this video. But really the reason for that is because every map that we're going to make in this module is going to be different because the argument that you're going to develop using your essay is going to be different from everybody else's. Um, and one of the key things that we're going to be doing in this module is not just um, looking at your essay and mapping out what already exists there, but we are going to add to it because typically the argument that you actually have in your essay, you're going to find is actually super simple and not very impressive. And what so what we're going to end up doing is start out by mapping what's there, but then we're actually going to add to it, enrich it, build it out deeper, better, more complex, more insightful. Um, and so that's what this video is, is all about, trying to create that argument that you didn't probably, that you probably didn't, really get going when you actually wrote your essay the first time. The key thing, because there aren't any kind of rules, I can't just lay out any rules here and get you to follow them and then you, you follow the recipe and boom, you're done, is that it's going to require some one-on-one -on -one feedback, which means that re-attempts are going to be essential at doing that. So you're going to want to expect to do this multiple times, submit a version of your essay map, get advice from me, go back, fix any mistakes that I think are in there, then add some more things and send it back to me for more feedback, that sort of thing, okay? Um, that's going to be essential. If you spend too much time and effort on your own trying to build out a huge complicated map and you send it in to me, it's likely that I'm going to find mistakes or faults or revisions to things that are going to kind of invalidate a lot of the work that you did. So you don't want to spend a lot of time on your own. You want to keep checking in with me to make sure that you're on the right track. The first thing is that the first thing that we have to realize here, actually, for your essay, it might start looking out pretty much like a listicle in that it will be a very short, truncated, shallow map. Um, that's usually what happens in that reverse outline is we get something that uh, looks like a listicle to begin with. The problem is that we all know those listicles were shallow and shallow means bad. And so when we're working on your essay, we're going to start there, but we're not going to finish there. We're going to build it down, right? And I can't give you any general advice. If you've written essays, you have probably gotten advice about the so-called hamburger essay or the three paragraph essay where you have your thesis and then you're supposed to put in your three strongest reasons and sometimes it's strongest one first uh, and then the weakest one and then the middle one or something you get rules like that those are training wheels we're done with that stuff and this is the best way to kind of break you free from that habit because every essay every argumentative piece of writing that you write is going to have its own argument in it and arguments don't have the same shape right some may be really kind of broad similar to a listicle in that they have many independent reasons for the thesis some may be uh very fairly tall and narrow in that they have basically one main branch that has sub reasons and things like that um, and some of them might be really kind of lopsided that is some branches or some sub branches on your main um, argument might get really well developed and get deep and, and, and broaden out at the end and other parts might just be like little stuffs. It's hard to say. It's There's no predicting how your map's going to look so there's no kind of right answer to stand back and look at your map and go, hey, that's a great map. It does everything that it needs to do because you have to look at the details, right? The only thing that I can say is that when we finish analyzing what you have in your essay presently and then building it out and fleshing it out properly is we are definitely not going to have a shallow map like your listicle. 
It's not going to be that simplistic. It's not going to be that dumb. As I kind of hinted at before, what we're doing here is kind of when we're building an argument, creating an argument, if we're going to have kind of tight cycles of adding claims, reasons, and making sure that they kind of work and belong where they where they where we place them in the map. And then once we've kind of verified that, then we add a little bit more, we check to make sure that it kind of works where it, where it is. And we're going to be doing that as we build out this map. So we're going to be doing, while we're building out the map, we're going to be doing quite a bit of informal argument evaluation, usually mostly the R, the relevance part, to make sure that our claims are connected together in ways that make sense. One thing that we are not going to be doing as we're building out our map is any formal ARG analysis, especially the A basis boxes, because you can't do those basis boxes till we kind of know that we have reached the ends of our arguments and that we have tips of our argument, the roots, with that, that we're not going any further, right? So do not do any ARG analysis, formal analysis, hanging R notes, answering G questions, things like that, until I give you the green light to do what we are going to be focusing most of our energy on is making sure the thesis and the top row of your map are solid and good before we do anything else. Okay. Um, depending on how your reverse outline worked, depending on the strength of your argument, this might take a while because you might have had kind of a pretty lame thesis that wasn't very controversial or insightful. You might have had, um, pretty mushy main reasons that we need to kind of maybe build out and add some to before we proceed in, in building down in your map. Um, the one thing that we have to pay attention to, though, is that when we're doing this, we're not doing an outline. When you do an outline for an essay, often you're directed to talk about topics. First talk about this topic and then shift to talking about this area or, or subject of discussion. When we're doing maps, we're not doing topics, we're doing reasons, right? So that's what most of my important feedback is going to be to haul you back onto the right track because you have been talking about topics. We want claims. We want full, complete sentences. Topics are names or brief phrases. Reasons are claims, complete sentences. So if you find yourself building your map, especially this top row of reasons, and all you have is one or two words in every box, then what you're doing is a topic map, an outline in visual form, and not a logic, an argument map, right? You want claims in those things. And once we get that set, once we're happy, once I'm happy with a nice, uh, insightful thesis, which might actually be quite different from the one that uh, your essay currently has, um, and some main reasons for that that uh, central claim, then the rest is actually should be a lot easier. We're, we're going to wrestle with this top row probably more than the rest of the argument because it's so key. So these are simple rules that should apply everywhere, stuff that should remind you from just doing the listicle. We want every one of our boxes to contain a complete but brief sentence that is simple and makes a straightforward claim. So we want to take out fluff and literary metaphors and all that other kind of stuff that you might have dressed up your paper with. Probably you aren't going to cut and paste a lot of things from your essay directly into our map. Probably going to rephrase things so that they're simpler. You can build it out afterwards. What we want in our map is just really simple, straightforward, easy to understand claims. Okay. One thing that you might need to put into the, the claims that you map that isn't in your essay are details, grammar, removing pronouns, things like that, because we want every one of the claims in the map to be an independently intelligible statement, like we did for the listicles. Right? None of our boxes in that map, either in the top row or down below, right, should have words like because or so or therefore in them. Those are called indicator words. I'll talk about them more later in this video, right? And sometimes even the word and, and is a multi-purpose conjunction that sticks together two claims. Um, sometimes ands are okay in a box, but often if you have an and 
in the statement in the box, that indicates that box can be split into two boxes. And we'll have to figure out how those two boxes ought to be arranged in our map, one above the other one, beside each other, that kind of thing. I'll talk more about that in this video too. But overall, what we want to do when we're trying to represent our, claim, our, our essay in a map is not to just put information in boxes. We want claims. They, they can be the same thing, right? But we want to make sure that we're making claims and putting those in boxes. All right. What, let's say that we've done the top row and now we're building down, right? Often, you'll have some stuff in your original essay and your familiarity with the topic that you'll find, oh, I have reasons for that. And you'll be able to build that stuff down. As you check to make sure that boxes are kind of arranged in the right way, we want to ask questions like these ones to kind of confirm that the relationship between one claim and another is properly mapped, right? So we want to ask, we want to pretend to be skeptical even if we're not, right? If I'm not convinced of a claim in this box, right? Uh, what could I say to reassure people that this box is true? Ah, the answer to that goes in a box below, right? Another way to phrase that, why should I believe that? Every answer to that goes in a box below, right? And we want to build out that depth, probably your essay, one or two layers only. We want to build at least three. We can get there. It's easy. We'll get there gradually and iteratively. We'll get there. But the key thing here, Right. And the most um, trickiest thing, especially when you're talking about creating your argument in your essay or taking things from your existing essay and trying to map them out, is that students will tend to um, try and map out narrative structure rather than logical structure. And so you'll take a look at the narrative sequence that you chose to write about particular things in your essay and you'll go, oh, okay. What that means is that I should put that same sequence in my map. First I said this, the box underneath it is the thing I said next, and then the box underneath it is the thing I said next. That's not logical structure, that's narrative sequence. We want to make, because it might be that you're starting from a reason, a sub-reason to a reason to the conclusion, and which means that those boxes need to get flipped upside down. How do we know what orientation, what order to put boxes in our map? We ask those questions to try and help us figure out which box is evidence for which other box, which claim is evidence for which other claim that I am also that I'm making in this, right? Which one's the reason? And that's the connection. This is our informal R evaluation, right? And the same thing, generally speaking, when we're trying to create or flesh out or deepen an argument and we're not borrowing from our existing essay, right? Take a look at a claim that currently is a tip, an endpoint in your map and ask yourself, if I had a reader who wasn't already sold on that claim, didn't already believe it, didn't already accept it, what could I say to make it more believable? And your answers to that belong in boxes below that claim. That's how we build down. All right, and now I'm going to give you kind of three other kind of key things that are part of creating an argument, building down an, an essay argument. 4A, 4B, 4C. So we're starting with 4A here, right? So I, I said we need to be alert for some specific words. Now, this won't be too much of a problem with essays because you because you wrote the essay and you at least fairly well understand the argument you presented in the essay you won't be relying on kind of decoding what was written to try and figure out what's the logical relationship between the claims I have here because they're your claims it's your argument so the importance of connector words is usually when you're looking at somebody else's written argument and you're trying to look for clues about how they're arranging their claims logically in a map and, and they use words like and and but and however as clues to tell you how different claims are related to one another on the map. But because you know your argument already, you probably have a pretty solid grasp of what is a reason for what other thing, what, what a particular objection is objecting to. So we won't have to rely too much on decoding your 
connector words to try and figure out what the logical structure is, but this stuff still can be useful, right? To take a look at it and to try and um, articulate, reflect, and realize, hey, how, how am I thinking about this argument that I have written out? Um, how can I depict it visually in a map, right? So connector words can still be useful, but they're less, they're, they're just less necessary for us to be aware of this stuff when we're mapping out our own argument. We should split boxes though, so sometimes, a lot of the time, when you're taking a look at your, uh, your argument in your essay and you're trying to put things in boxes, you put too much in any one box. We want to make sure that every box just has a single claim in it. If you have some of these indicator words in a box that you have mapped, that probably means that the stuff you have stuffed into that box, you put too much in, and we need to break it up into multiple boxes. That's a good thing. That's going to make our map more informative. Um, and if once we get all the arrangement of all those distinct claims in the in the right spots, it's going to help illuminate the relationship, the logical structure of your map, and give you a better handle on how your argument works. Right. So this is this would be a place if you should not have any of these words or phrases in the claims that you have put in your essay map. All right. um, here I have some examples from arguments from other people. I would invite you in the comments in Perusall to try and tell me how each one of these, just pick one and do it, and tell me how many boxes you think it ought to be split up, where it ought to be split, and whether the boxes should go like side by side or which one should, which half, or which claim should go above the other claim, and then leave the other ones for other people. Or if somebody else has already put um, their proposed how to, how to break this up answer in the comments, take a look at it and see if you agree that that's the way that it ought to be broken up. All right, one thing that we rarely see in student essays are objections, which is terrible. And I think in one of my previous essay uh, videos, I have really ranted about the lack of objections, the fact that you need objections in your paper, because if you only have a green box, if all you have is green boxes in your map, you only got one side of the story. And the thesis that you should be picking in your essay should be something insightful, controversial, not an obvious truth needs arguing, right? And if it needs arguing to convince random people, then that means that there are probably reasons not to believe it. And we need to include those in our essay, in our essay map, to reassure the prof that we're writing this essay for, that we have contemplated those things, that we realized that there are other ways to view this, objections and alternative viewpoints and alternative opinions about our, our thesis, and that we've incorporated those into our view of the subject, that's going to be very reassuring to that prof. Yeah, this person really knows the subject because they know both sides. All right? So we need red boxes eventually somewhere in your paper. Now, it could be in your essay map that those red boxes are in the top row, that they are directly objecting to your thesis statement, or it could be that they are objections to your reasons, that is, they're in the second row, and that they are arguing against the truth of one of your main reasons. Or it could be that they're even further down. I don't know. You'll be, you'll be kind of in charge of inventing these things, creating these objections, or realizing existing objections. Yeah, there's this existing objection that is part of this discussion. Where should I place it? And we need to ask ourselves, to, to be able to answer that, where should I place it in my map, we need to ask it, an analog of that same question we were asking when we were building down and, and asking where the green boxes belong, right? If this objection was true, if I believed it, then what other claim am I making in my essay that this objection would tend to make me think was false? We find that box, we place the red box right underneath it. The other thing that we need to do after we place red boxes is we have to realize that there are claims just like anything else. And even though you might not believe that objection, you might not think it's credible or super relevant or something like that, 
that there are people who are fans of it and believe it, and they're going to have reasons why they think that objection is true, and we need to include those two as green boxes underneath that red box. Okay? The third thing that we need to kind of pay attention to, which might play a role in how you map your essay, is that sometimes you need more than one claim to form a reason. Okay? And so this can be a little bit tricky, but if you take a look, I've got some examples here to kind of illustrate this. And that is, sometimes a single claim on its own can't provide a reason to believe something else. It needs to work as a partner with something else, or, or two other things. Maybe you have three claims simultaneously in one reason that helps support some other claim. So take a look at this one here on the left. I've got I will fail the exam is the conclusion, and the reasons why I am confident I'll fail some exam is because if I don't read the readings and review the lecture notes, I'll fail the exam, and I did not actually read the readings or review the lecture notes. And you should be able to get a sense here that if I just had this on its own, that might provide some kind of weak evidence or support for failing the exam, right? But it depends on the type of exam, which is why we need this, right? This helps connect that because it's giving us information about the kind of the kind of exam and the kind of studying necessary to do well on that exam. Also, this on its own doesn't support my failing the exam because if I partnered it, if I partnered 1AA here with a different claim that said, I did complete the readings and go over my lecture notes extensively before before the quiz, right? Then that plus that partner would support a totally different claim. I will get a good grade on this exam, right? So they're partners. That's what co-premises are. Partner claims that work together to form one single reason. And this is why we use the advanced reasoning format in Rationale Online, because it's only in the advanced reasoning format that we can take these boxes and drag them and plonk them to, to group more than one inside a green box. The regular reasoning won't let us do this. That's why we use the advanced reasoning. All right. Here's a couple more examples for you. So over in the comments, again, if you have questions about these, if you can articulate what's kind of gone wrong here that gets fixed when you include them both in the same reason box, put that in the comments and let's have some discussion about this. Okay, just to, I want to make sure that people kind of can understand why in some cases you want these two together and in other cases, not this case, but in other cases it's perfectly appropriate to have two independent reasons feeding into the same box, right? When it comes to evaluating co-premises, multiple claims in the same green box, every single one of those white boxes here either needs a branch of support or needs its own basis box, counts as a, a tip in our argument that we need to cap off with a basis box. But if we're going to do an R evaluation, we do an R evaluation on the reason, not on any particular claim within the reason. Right. So if we didn't have supporting evidence, if we didn't have further claims that supported each one of these, we would have to have a basis box under each one of these white boxes, but only one R note pointing at the green box as a whole. All right. Okay, so that was a lot of stuff. Probably when you are building out your essays, you're going to want to revisit this video and take a look and see that you have kind of done these things. Ask yourself as you're building stuff out, watch this video again. Have do I have scan over your map are any of these things co-premises have i got objections in here have i placed them in the right spot that kind of stuff right have i got my uh I, do i have sufficiently simple um claims or have i smuggled in a lot of claims into one box and i need to split them up and will those indicator words help me uh, split them up correctly and get them arranged right in my map but as always do not do too much work before you hand it in to me to check it over okay 30 minutes, an hour, that's it. Add three, four, five boxes, submit it. Let me take a look at that stuff because if you start adding layers, if you start adding all sorts of bells and whistles, 
but I take a look at it and go, I don't think that you have mapped the core of your map right. You, your main reasons are off. They're not connected. Or this branch right here, it just doesn't belong here. It belongs way over there. Then I direct you to do that stuff, and it's going to invalidate lots of the work that you, uh, that you have put some time and effort in. And I don't want that to happen. So it's good for you to just do a little bit of work, submit it for checks. As you gain confidence and experience, then you can kind of extend that. You can do more work because you'll have your own sense that you're confident that, that you aren't off track. But as we're building up to that, you want to check in with me often, okay? You might want think, but I want to do a lot of work because I got to wait to get that feedback and I'm anxious, I'm impatient to get this done. So I just want to do it all. Don't do that because that will waste a lot of time and effort on your part. Do a little bit of work, submit it, and while you're waiting for my feedback, go do the topics and thinking readings and stuff like that to fill your time while you're waiting for me to give it back to you with feedback. All right? Good luck.